Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, May 25th, 6.16 a.m. Central Time as I speak here. Sorry, I'm a little delayed here this morning. Uh, technical difficulties, of course. July corn down seven and a half at 764 and a quarter. December corn down eight and a half at 716 and three quarters. July soybeans down seven and a half, 1685 and a half last. November beans down four and a quarter at 1513 and a quarter. July Chicago wheat down 27 and a quarter at 1127 and a half. July Kansas City wheat down 24 and three quarters at 1213. July spring wheat down 18 and a quarter at 1259. If you are listening on the podcast, appreciate it. Leave me a rating. Leave me a review on that Apple app in particular. If you're watching on YouTube, guys, uh, subscribe to the channel. Like these videos. Leave me a comment. Let me know what's going on in your neighborhood. Uh, if you'd like some additional information from me, go to my website. It is www.standardgrain.com. Check out my premium subscription service. I'll send you a ton of information direct from me every single business day. Morning email goes out uh, before 6 a.m. Central every day. That includes all of my grain marketing recommendations, every overnight headline you need to be aware of, charts, graphics, weather info. My subscriber-only videos are probably the most popular part of this uh, premium deal. I did one yesterday regarding the Ukraine situation, talked about logistics and production, more so focused on logistics, uh, provided an, an update and some additional context here. If you guys are interested in this premium content, 50 bucks a month, cancel it at any time, no other fee, no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else, I promise. China will now allow sizable Im imports of Brazilian corn. There was an agreement finalized yesterday, I believe. Uh, Brazilian corn was essentially off limits in China due to phytosanitary restrictions, uh, which are uh, inspection requirements, that sort of thing, up until this week. China has had similar agreements in place with the U.S., Ukraine, and Argentina, which have allowed for imports from those countries. The lack of exports from Ukraine uh, to China, where China typically buys a lot of its corn, probably triggered this decision. Um, the approval is likely within three months. So this is probably something that will affect uh, new crop more so than old crop at this point. The end result here, I think, will be a shakeup in the export market and trade flows, generally speaking. China is very likely to prefer Brazilian corn versus U.S. corn. It's simply just cheaper to ship corn from Brazil to China than it is from the U.S. to China. Now, other global buyers that typically rely on Brazil may have to ship some of their demand to the U.S. So this move in itself, it doesn't provide any additional or any less supply and demand to the global balance sheets. What it's going to do is kind of reshuffle the demand deck, I think. You're going to see fewer of those big U.S. flash sales to China, and you may instead see smaller uh, sales, more smaller sales to other global buyers. So I think the trade reads this as being bearish. I don't know if I read it as being bearish. I mean, there's not going to be any any less global demand. It's just going to be shifted around. But um, in any case, this is a big story that a lot of people are talking about. Some groups are raising estimates for Ukrainian grain production and exports. APK Inform, which is a Ukraine-based consultancy, raised its forecast for new crop grain production and exports this week. They've got the wheat crop at 17.1 million, which is still below USDA's estimate, I believe. Uh, they've got the corn crop at 25.2, which is uh, quite a bit above USDA's recent estimate. They've got uh, total new crop grain exports at 39.4 million, which is above their previous estimate. So you've got more headlines uh, regarding Ukraine. This group in particular you're a little bit more optimistic in regard to the situation, but you've still got grain stuck in the country. Um, I think farmers are facing fuel shortages, exporters seeking alternative means, all of that stuff. Now, um, this situation, Ukraine's inability to ship grain, it's garnering more attention here uh, nationally. It's not just us in the grain markets talking about this. The Wall Street Journal published an opinion piece yesterday suggesting that the U.S. lead an international food and export operation. Uh, this piece suggested that the move be pitched as a humanitarian operation. This proposed mission suggested by a former U.S. Army general would involve an international coalition of warships escorting grain vessels out of the Black Sea. Uh, this seems very much far-fetched, I know, and this is just an opinion piece. This is not a comment from the U.S. or NATO or anybody. But I think it underscores the idea that this is um, a big-time deal. This is a situation that has garnered global attention. 
food prices are rising, inflation, countries are worried about food security, that sort of thing. So where do we go from here? I don't know, but it's being more widely discussed. Got some rains moving across the Corn Belt here this morning. You got rain over Oklahoma, but then uh, some scattered stuff over, um, say, Nebraska. Uh, there were rains over Iowa over, overnight, uh, Minnesota into Wisconsin here this morning. This stuff will make its way east uh, through Friday, Saturday. Over the next five days, this is the next five days in total uh, precipitation on my screen. You're going to see, you know, up to an inch, maybe slightly more across most of the Corn Belt. North Dakota kind of on the drier side. Rains there return. I believe on Saturday. So you've still got a decent window for planting for a lot of areas. Uh, scattered rains here and there, certainly. And, and the rains, again, double-edged sword, depending on whether or not you're done planting or still attempting to uh, get these crops in the ground. Uh, your 6 to 10 and 8 to 14 day look actually wetter for the western Corn Belt, northern plains, and then drier for the central and eastern part of the Corn Belt. The Biden administration has not ruled out restrictions on U.S. energy exports. U.S. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm spoke to reporters in Louisiana yesterday. She was asked if the Biden administration was weighing restrictions on petroleum exports in order to tame surging gasoline and diesel prices. She said this, I can confirm the president is not taking any tools off the table. Uh, government intervention, of course, when it comes to markets can be very tricky. You know, this might help you out on the fuel side. But uh, what happens if the government did the same thing to corn, soybeans or wheat and restricted exports in the name of food security or inflation or whatever? Uh, it can be a slippery slope, certainly. Cattle market was mixed yesterday. Feeder cattle were higher. That's not a bad performance, again, considering that bearish cattle on feed report on Friday. The hog market was lower, but uh, has acted uh, fairly well overall the last several sessions. U.S. dollar is higher ahead of the cash open. The stock market still trying to find some footing here. Uh, the trend still very much lower here. Uh, the S&P is down 15. The Dow down 130. Bonds are up. Gold's down 12 bucks. Crude oil up $1.28 in the July WTI 111.02 last. Have a great day, guys. I'll talk to you tomorrow.